I would say like students as well needs to be like have like a good connection with their teachers as well as the teachers trying to open themselves up as a friend to a student not like a enemy or like a I don't know you I don't want you here right? I think I had a really good high school experience I had amazing teachers who were really supportive and so I I always noticed things that I would attribute to sociology now but I didn't know what they were called and so I would talk to my teachers a lot and so they taught me so they would tell me, you know, just work really hard and you'll get this. And I was like, that's not true. Like, I can see that's not true. My parents work hard every day and they don't have much to show for it, right? And so then they'd be like, oh, you're attributing that to the myth of meritocracy. And so I thought that that was like really cool um, that like through school, you could legitimize people's experiences. Young people face a lot of challenges. Um, from uh, what's going on in their home life. Um, many young people might face, uh, there could be issues of domestic violence, there could be issues of conflict within the home, uh, their parents also not having the resources to provide for them, um, uh, being, uh, coming from low-income backgrounds. Um, so I think that when young people come to school, they carry a lot, and because they carry a lot, um, they need support to work on those issues, as well as support in doing well in school. And I think it's difficult because schools don't have the resources sometimes to support young people mm -hmm. or the schools or the staff um, may face challenges in terms of how to help young people. So I think a lot of our programs are there to support the schools, support the teachers, but support the young people in being able to navigate the difficult situations they find themselves in their community. Living in Helm Park, I feel like gentrification is the most big problem here because Having four coffee shops in one block is just ridiculous. When you could have, that's just an example. I live in Highland Park, a well, well, you know, a nice looking place you know, throughout the years. It's been changing. Any movement should be to support the people who live in this community, mm -hmm. the people who go to school here, who work here. Um, and so I know that the community of Highland Park of Northeast Los Angeles is facing many difficult issues, um, particularly around the issue of gentrification, that families who've lived here for a long time, who work here, are unable to live here because of the cost of living is so high, um, as well as just a lot of issues that low-income families are facing in Los Angeles. And so I think that what movement you all decide to build, that we should be there to support that, um, and in particular, I think that would be to help around issues of housing, um, uh, help around issues of food insecurity, um, because many families don't have the food uh, that, they're, that they need, um, to help around quality education, and then around issues of immigrants' rights. Um, and then we, in addressing the issue of housing, um, and we, we, also, we have to address the issue that uh, housing should be more affordable in Los Angeles and that the wages that people earn who work the jobs that make the city run uh, should be high enough so that people can have a decent standard of living and can live in the place where they work. Um, and that means like a living wage. Um, so those I think are basic things that exist within our community that, that we have to fight for. Um, and, uh, and, and then and, um, I think that the housing situation in Los Angeles is probably one of the most critical ones in terms of homelessness. Um, I've seen so many more homeless people in the city of Los Angeles uh, within the last two or three years compared to even earlier. And even where I live in the San Fernando Valley, there's huge, large homeless encampments of people who have nowhere else to go. And uh, it's a crisis. And um, figuring out how we all help to, 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 change, to do something about that is important because many of those people who are homeless are families our children that live in cars, um, and their parents work. They just simply cannot afford housing here, and that's, that's, like, that's an injustice. Um, in the case of, of, and I'll speak specifically for the Muslim community, there's a need, and then to talk about other communities, there's a real need for us to build solidarity with uh, in this case, the Muslim community, um, because they're very, very vulnerable, and to and 
as well as I would say the undocumented community is two communities that are just being so heavily targeted in the times that we live in. Um, and the root of this is uh, xenophobia, fear of the other, uh, fear of immigrants, but it also is a pervasive part of American history, a part of uh, white supremacy, um, because the people who are being targeted are, come, are, are people of color, are people who are part of, of communities um, that are not like traditional like white communities or from white Christian communities, for example. I did a career fair once at, a, at an elementary school and I had little kids coming up to me telling me how scared they were that their parents were gonna get deported. And these are seven and eight year olds and babies that shouldn't be worrying about this, that my white affluent children never have to worry about this, right? And so having our kids traumatized and not having the opportunity to have childhoods is something that our kids should not experience, and they do. What are we doing to undocumented people? We're destroying their families. We are taking ch parents from children, children from parents. Um, that is a crime against humanity. As a mother, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of anything worse for somebody to do than to take me from my child, right? Besides killing me or killing my child, there isn't anything worse if you're a parent. You love your children. And when I go out and I see how undocumented parents are feeling and then children of undocumented parents are feeling that their parents are going to be taken away, that is a crime. You know, when we think about the history of slavery in this country, part of the big problem was that one of the major crimes was that they sold parents and they separated families and they did these things that just destroyed people. And that is the story that we need to tell. We need to have a movement and to talk about with people that this, at the basic level, we're all human beings. And human beings deserve to be able to be with their families, to be able to be cared for, um, to have basic resources like food, housing, a job, to have decent education. These are the fundamental things that we as human beings need. And that this is a basic human and civil right. And that um, the treatment of undocumented people is just wrong because is, is simply wrong in the sense of the idea that no human being is illegal, right? And, and I think that that is a very um, important thing that we are teaching society. So it's really good that we're all a part and of I it. And I remember when and I was in high school, I guess this is something, like I, felt I was, like I felt like I was the only undocumented person in the world, right? Because nobody, like you can't talk about it, right? That's something that they tell you, don't talk about it. And so I felt so, I felt so alone, like nobody understood that like all this work that I had done is just like for now. Like literally like if you have done just like your life's work and someone just trashes it, right? And you're just like, dang. And so when I, when I got to college and I started talking to other folks who were also undocumented and just learning like, oh my gosh, you understand exactly what I, what I feel. Like we would be like, oh, have, someone would be like, oh, have you gone to SeaWorld? I was like, I don't know, I ain't going to San Diego, right? And other people were like, hey, me either. And I was like, oh, you understand my life. Um, so just like learning, learning to speak to people that, that you feel understood is so important. Um, and then people who are a little bit older than you, so that you can just the navigational capital that you can gain is crazy. Um, you can like, you can do so much with the knowledge that of people who've like gone through it before. Um, and so just like I said before, like learning to organize so that you, you all can support each other. And y'all, not everybody has to be undocumented for that to happen, right? It's just like caring enough about each other so that we can all rise together. Immigrants are important because that's what makes this country, that's what builds up this country. As there's an old saying that says, America is a melting pot. What's a melting pot? A melting pot is where you cook different um, like soups, stew. What do you mix in it? Different types of vegetables. As America is a melting pot with different types of race, it makes up one delicious country. We are so powerful if we get our stuff together and we work together to like change things. Um, so I think that the primary, the prim like my primary advice is to use our power collectively. Like we need to stop uh, looking at our differences and like come together to fight against something that's detrimental to all of our futures and to our children. And I think that 
that's what that's what we need to do. We need to get educated about our rights, educated about the ways that we've changed things in the past, and then we need to do it. Um, we've wasted so much time, and so many people are being hurt. Um, and that doesn't it doesn't need to be that way. And we can imagine we have the we have the like the ability and the strength and the brains to to make this world so much better for us. We just need to do it.